three days. How are you feeling? You know, it's, uh, you know, when you kind of reflect on the first three days every year, it's probably the same canned answer from every coach. Uh, you know, the enthusiasm is where it needs to be. The guys are excited about uh, learning in the, in the meeting room, and they've given really good effort. A uh, lot to clean up. You know, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty quiet the first couple practices just because the amount of offense, the amount of defense is uh, still fairly limited. So uh, the enthusiasm is where it needs to be. A uh, lot, to, lot to improve on. And uh, something Coach Wilcox told us down at uh, Media Day is Evan's taken the next step in his development at the inside linebacker position. What in particular does that mean for you in seeing him develop? For Tat, it's been about just the consistency. You know, he has, uh, he has really good tools. It's just about being able to strain uh, in, in difficult situations, keep, uh, continue with the, the concentration that's necessary. And then, uh, like everybody on defense, we're always striving to improve our finishes. How is, uh, after spring and now three days here, how's Coyne doing in, in the position switch? Is it everything working out the way you thought it Yeah, Coyne has a, a lot of banked reps. So he has a good understanding of what's happened adjacent to him from the will linebacker position. And it's really just the amount of, of getting him on the line of scrimmage more uh, with setting some of the edges and some of the different techniques we play at that uh, defensive end position or the outside linebacker position. And then kind of dusting off some of the, some of the pass rush stuff that he uh, has done in his past, but we didn't ask him to do uh, a lot of it in the last two years. And so you're, you're pleased with it so far? So yes, I'm pleased with uh, Coyne as a player. Uh, and we, you know what he brings in terms of leadership in the locker room, and he's he's doing uh, what we need him to do, and, and what he expects out of himself. How does the uh, skill set and responsibilities differ from the boundary outside linebacker to the field? The uh, you know the first thing we, we you know kind of talk about is is where we want to play those guys in terms of how much space you know the boundary is going to have limited space. Uh, I believe the last three or four years, eighty four percent of every snap has been. Uh, the ball has been somewhere within a yard uh, of the hash. Not a lot of middle of the field in college football. Uh, so we have some space uh, differences there, and then we'll have some different techniques. A lot of the guys that play into the boundary can play to the field. Um, you know, it's just kind of trying to find and really blend uh, of the two players we have in there, what are the strengths and, and where do we, uh, you know, intend to play them. And, and as much as uh, what the technique is, is who's in there. Who do we want to the field? Who do we want to the boundary? How does that apply to, to good and bad? We're very comfortable with both of them. I mean, they can play right and left and let the ball dictate where the field and boundary is. So, uh, you know, we're not overly concerned about who's going to play to the field or the boundary with those two. And in that same vein, is there a fundamental difference between the Mike and the Will spots? Or is it in that not really. Way? You know, uh, if you go back and look at some of the formations that we've uh, played against the last four seasons. Uh, the, the Mike linebacker, which uh, most of the time is our field inside linebacker. Uh, he does have a, a little bigger space sometimes. And you see that in the tackles that, we, uh, that he ends up in. You know, he ends up with some more space. Uh, so the Will linebacker is playing a little limited space, similar to what the Rush is doing uh, in 3-4. But again, uh, we don't personnel it too much. They both, both the Mike and the Will, Share a lot of the same physical traits. Where does Tattersall fit into that uh, scenario you just described? Yeah, Tattersall plays the the Mike linebacker position for us. So, which is traditionally the the field uh, inside linebacker, unless we uh, find ourselves in a formation defense, and then the formation defense will supersede the field. How's his, how's his ball camp so far? He's doing well. You know, he's uh, he's always had the tools. You know, and and he's just. Uh, continuing to develop the consistency of performance and with consistency of performance nobody can give you confidence that has to be earned you have to uh, feel that when you step on the field I think you have to feel that when you're in the meeting room that you know the answer uh, you have confidence in your body and then you start seeing those plays come on film and that's where the confidence is going to come from How's it happen to Luke back? It's great. You know, Luke is a uh, very productive player for us. You know, he's uh, been great in the uh, in the locker room uh, throughout the entire time that, that uh, you know, he's been here. So it's been a big boost to have him back, and, and he's looking really good. Is there any question that he'll be available for game one? You know, not that I'm aware of. I think Coach, you know, Coach and Luke are, are probably having those discussions. But, uh, you know, he's out there practicing with us, and, and uh, we're, we're practicing with him.
have Stanley in there in the middle, how is it having a true nose guard who's starting to really you know, flash throughout these practices? Yeah, that's something that, uh, you know, A.B., Coach Browning does a really nice job of, of identifying the, the guys that he's recruited and ultimately signed. And, uh, you know, there's several interior guys that we're really excited about. Stanley is, is one of those. Uh, he is uh, very strong at the point of attack. You know, he's picked up the game well, and, and he's continued to play physical, and we're excited about what the future is for him. Yeah, and you've used uh, Jake in there a couple times over the last couple of days as well. Is he a true nose guard type, or is he a guy you can move around? I think Jaden can play a four, a three, a two, uh, a shade, or a zero. I think he can play inside the A and the B gaps. So we'll just continue to move him around and develop him, and, and Coach Browning has a nice plan for him. What, what are the responsibilities of your nose guard? What, what do you want out of that guy? Uh, you know, we want a guy to be able to, to you know, kind of anchor the interior part uh, of the run game for us uh, and then be able to push the pocket in, in pass. You know, it's uh, not a position that – you know, is real flashy. It is, is very blue collar. It is very uh, grimy and dirty. Uh, and those guys need to uh, really embrace the, the repetitive banging of that position of a center of a center guard combo and just continue to, to try to dent the offense and try to be somebody that can, that can hold kind of the, the A gaps and that, that center, ga uh, center guard spacing from, uh, from moving too much on the defensive line. I'm saying, say, Oren, Oren, Oren. OP, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oren, uh, he's doing, he's doing really well off the edge. You know, he does have uh, a really nice first step. He's a natural pass rusher. He was a natural pass rusher when we signed him out of uh, Rainier Beach, and he's continued to improve on that. Uh, as you guys know, his body has changed tremendously. He's put on a lot of good weight, and he's becoming uh, more consistent with understanding the uh, the playbook. Coach Hayward has been really good for him. Uh, Keith does a really nice job, in my opinion, of, of taking the, the defenses down to uh, kind of down to the roots and then building that foundation. So I think that's been very good for uh, Oren as well in terms of his progression. Is there any sense you have some situation where you have just two down linemen? Is that in any way possible that it'll be, that'd be more than just a situational thing? Well, I mean, that's really uh, kind of our, our, our nickel defense. Yeah. You know, uh, we give those. Uh, the two defensive ends, you know, kind of based on uh, uh, their comfort level. Sometimes you'll see those guys play in two points. Sometimes you'll play them in three points. But that's, that's nothing uncommon that you wouldn't have seen if you've been playing, uh, watching our film for the last four years. Uh, there's a lot of times that right. you'll have uh, in four-down space and you'll have two guys hands down. I was just wondering whether that might turn into your base defense. Um, you know, we'll have the opportunity to, you know, we have base defense. And, uh, you know, the beauty of it is that I can make, really kind of any defense we want to be the base defense. We have extensive defenses in both of our spacings and, and uh, you know, we'll allow uh, what's best for us and what's the best matchup versus the opponent to kind of be the base defense for the week.